Oh. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Derek Watson, the angry dentist. <clears throat> Still a bit croaky, you may be wondering why the absence of videos? Why the absence of videos, secondary to absence of voice? I had no, uh, my speaking tubes were up the spout and were for a good three weeks. I lost my voice literally three weeks, one day ago. <clears throat> and uh, it's taken all this time to come back. I had a shocking, some sort of virus and sinus and laryngitis and everything else that ends with S. Not syphilis, obviously. But uh, yeah, so no can't talk, <laughs> no can video. <laughs> uh, which is a shame because, you know, things have been happening at the usual glacial pace that they happen in dentistry so <clears throat> don't worry you haven't missed too much the most uh, notable thing that's happened to me in the last uh, couple of weeks is I went on an implant course so you're you're looking at uh, the country's most successful implantologist at the moment probably tied for first place with a hundred percent success rate of implants based on a sample of one that's been in for less than a week so uh, I shall uh, of course be using this to the full in my marketing material but um, <coughs> excuse me if I cough I probably will for a couple of days still you can probably tell I'm a bit croaky this is my new, this is my new Pixel 2 phone not the XL the uh, because that was made by HTC, which is made my Nexus 5, which packed up, which I'm really cross about. So I've got the other one, not the, the not big one, which is made by someone else, Huawei or someone anyway, I don't know. Not HTC anyway. So uh, yeah, so we'll have to see how the video quality turns out on this. It's a nice phone, expensive, about £800. $800 if you're in the United States, possibly less, but uh, it's like a pure Google, um, but like the Nexus was, and uh, and uh, oh, I'm behind a lorry delivering bricks, and so it's going to be scraping past everything, which wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't due at work in three minutes, and I'm 20 minutes away. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's very quick. It's got a very quick processor, so if you get a Pixel 2, um, then, uh, you know, upgrade from a Nexus 5 or 5X or something, 5S, then what you'll notice is that everything happens instantaneously. You know, it's all really, really fast. And uh, there's no more sort of waiting for, uh, you know, and it boots up in about 15 seconds. It's really quick. But otherwise, it's not, <clears throat> it's not all that, you know, it's, the trouble is a lot of the features on these new phones are not really designed for um, 50 year old dentists. They're more designed for, you know, supposing you're, supposing you're sitting with your mates in a pub or a bar and you've got your phone, you know, next to you and a song comes on, you like it and you don't know what it is, um, then um, the phone will tell you. It literally, if it hears music, it will try and identify the track. Um, you know, and it's very good on like uh, pop music and stuff like that. We're I mean, not so good on uh, Beethoven uh, piano concertos, but um, <clears throat> I mean that's great. You know, if you're into well into music, contemporary music, but otherwise it downloads a whole database of music fingerprints because it's all done offline, and therefore it stores all this data on your phone to identify every single song that it might hear. And uh, it's, it's just wasted space, as far as I'm concerned. And the other thing is that, you know, they, they, I think because they needed to sell this phone, they needed a hook. So they said, oh yeah, it's got a Google Assistant is now, you know, red hot and she's gonna, you know, uh, help you with anything you like, like a real like personal assistant built into the phone. And it's not, it's the same Google that we've all learned to love and hate, who's so stupid, you know, that she can't, she doesn't know when you say ring so and so that that person is your daughter or uh, you, know, um, you know you can't navigate anywhere and, and, or just comes up with results from the web from some really sort of basic query that 
that like a three-year-old child would understand what you meant. So, so that's not, I don't think that's any better either. I mean, I think the people who are getting good uh, results with uh, Google, uh, uh, voice search and stuff like that, are people who are very heavily tailoring their behavior to the search engine, rather than the search engine getting any better at, uh, at uh, trying to understand what we as humans are saying. I'd say because of the faster processor, the voice recognition is a bit better. Um, and in many ways, if you just talk naturally, it will understand you. Whereas if you if you sort of try and talk very clearly, it clearly doesn't. So that's a bit strange. But anyway, that's the phone. That's the phone. We'll see how we get on it. <clears throat> it's got to last me a couple of years. I've already dropped it and bent the corner and cracked the case, so that didn't take long. So this implant course, yeah, it was in um, Dewsbury. No, it wasn't. It was in Shrew Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury. And uh, uh, the headquarters of this uh, firm called Dentium, or Implantium, I was never really quite sure which one owns the other. But um, anyway, uh, Dental is the name of the place I was at. And uh, they do a good course. It's, it's about 2,000 plus fat, <coughs> which I think is is reasonable when now now I know what they provide you know for a week's course I suppose it's uh, uh, it also compares quite well with other implant courses you know who you start getting ripped off as an implantologist or even before you're an implantologist your uh, training you know is always tens of thousands of pounds and it's, it goes back to the days when implants were a real license to print mega money you know um, like almost like endodontics, you know what they used to say about uh, dentists own race horses and endodontists own race courses, um, and uh, implantologists own uh, whatever's bigger than a race course. I don't know, an airfield. <laughs> so that's a joke about Tony Benkowski. If you know Tony Benkowski, owns half of Rochester Airfield, but. Um, The, um, you know, it was pretty. It was pretty good in that there was sort of three days worth of uh, book work, and then there's a day when you place an implant in a plastic plastic jaw, and then there's a day when you put, place an implant in a pig's nose. Oh, I'm so stupid. Right, this is how stupid I am. They <laughs> said we're going to put we're going to put an implant in a pig's head. So I'm like, yeah, fair enough. You know, pigs very similar to humans, aren't they, in terms of uh, all things you know all similar organs and stuff like that and uh, I, I, I uh, for some reason I thought we were going to put it in the pig's jaw I mean that's logical isn't it isn't that what you would think I, I thought it's a, it's an implant a jaw implant I didn't say it was a nose implant but you don't put it in the pig's jaw you put it in the pig's nose which to me seems a bit stupid <laughs> so it's dead easy I mean the pig's got a big flat nose so you can't really get an implant wrong it's just a case of learning how to handle the drills, I suppose. But, uh, but no, you put an implant in a pig's nose, apparently. <laughs> so if you ever see a pig running around with a three-unit bridge on its nose, that'll be the one I did. But uh, <laughs> and then you go on. So you've done your plastic jaw, you've done your your xeno xeno implant, and then. Uh, then you go on to uh, do one in a patient and uh, so I've been a private dentist you know I, I hang around outside until my patient turned up he turned out to be a charming chap <clears throat> ex-marine and uh, and uh, you know and uh, so I had quite a long chat with him like 15 20 minutes before we went in to stick the implant in and <clears throat> do you know in a way I think that's guarantee the success of the implant as much as anything because uh, he was he was obviously nervous he was having two implants placed in one each by two students he knew, he knew there were students and they almost certainly our first implants and uh, so of course he's going to be nervous isn't he so I went and had a chat with him and said oh, um, my name's Derek I'm I'm one of the guys who's going to be putting your implants in you know how are you and everything so 
and me and him, it's off because he used to live down here uh, in Kent, and, and we were having a chat. So by the time we went through and I got him numb and everything, uh, it, had all, it all went really well. So we did some couple of fantastic implants. He's going to have a three unit bridge on it. Um, they charge them six fifty for the implants. They're placed by students. <coughs> which I think is about a third of the price they charge normally. They've got a big implant practice up there and they uh, they accept, um, they've got a, what they do is they've got a certain division of uh, labour in that one guy places all the implants and another guy does all the restorations and guy A doesn't talk to guy B which seems a bit silly because the, the restorative guy has almost always got a challenge, you know, he's got like, oh no, well, if I was going to put the implants in, if I was going to say where the implants were going to go, I probably wouldn't have put them there. So that was a bit weird. But um, I'll be placing the implants and restoring them, or if they're difficult, I'll be referring them for placement and then restoring them myself. So, we'll have to wait and, you know. But it's nice, funnily enough, I had a patient in yesterday who, we're getting some, we're getting we've got a lot of new patients in. And we, they're getting, they're coming in with all sorts of problems to do with um, other dentists. To be honest, uh, someone came in with a lower left six, massive great gum boil on it, buckley, been there for a long time, tooth solid as a rock. Uh, got some sort of uh, MOD composite in it, and in the middle of the MOD composite is is an occlusal composite. So you're thinking, right? Well, this is obviously, you know, someone's obviously been inside this tooth haven't they to try and try and clean it all out and uh, so a patient's got a history of having two courses of antibiotics and being told that um, they needed to have the tooth out so they've come to us really because they're fed up with they can't have any more antibiotics they can't get on an NHS list and they want to have the tooth out because it's infected so, so I said, well, what was the problem? Why couldn't they root treat it, you know? I, I'm rather hoping the patient would say, oh, well, because the mesiobuccal root was blocked. But and they never say that, of course, do they? And usually the answer is, I don't know, I don't know. They, that's just what they told me, I've just got to have the tooth out. So I said, like, would you like to, oh yeah, I would like to, I'd love to save it. So I said, well, let's take it, take it to bits and have a look inside and see why, you know, what's stopping it. And if I can't do it either, then fine. So what, what you do is you go you sort of get this occlusal, open up this occlusal and then you open it up a bit more and then you find a bit of cotton wool inside with which doesn't smell of anything or any antiseptic or anything. And uh, and uh, sort of uh, open the pulp chamber properly and then put some uh, hypochlorite in it and, and uh, get a reamer down, down these three canals which, and you can tell if nobody's ever been down a canal because there was no, you know, there's no sign that, what they'd done is it looked like that they sort of opened it up and put a bit of cotton wool inside it and then closed it up again. I don't really expect, think how they, because I know they, they teach that when you open up a root canal, you're supposed to put some something inside it and then, you know, that will then diffuse throughout the tooth and kill any bacteria and then the gumball should go away and then obviously if it doesn't then uh, oh, she'd been told that it was cracked, it was probably cracked. And I think the reason why they told it was probably cracked was because the gumboil didn't go away. So they thought, oh, the, the diffusing is not working. I'm going to have to, um, you know, it must be a, an invisible crack. So anyway, uh, what you have to do is you have to open up the tooth and, and open it up properly, right? I mean... <clears throat> I mean, okay. There's all this, you know. I mean, there's a great load of kudos in doing keyhole surgery on on uh, teeth, but on a lower molar, honestly, what you can literally see inside it, <clears throat> if you open it up enough, you can literally see every single canal uh, directly, you know, without using a mirror or anything. And bear in mind that this tooth is going to have to come out. If you can't save it, it's going to be extracted. So it doesn't matter if you wreck it and turn it into a bomb site to root treat it. If as long as it's restorable at the end. By, by root treating it properly, you're saving this tooth. And if you don't save it, then it has to come out anyway. So no no harm, no foul, you know? So open it up properly and then and then open up the canals. 
and don't just open them up and sort of put some antiseptic inside it and hope it's going to suddenly uh, you know diffuse 20 millimeters up a hole that's the size of a human hair because it won't get get a 20 reamer down the canal uh, to, hopefully to the you know to the extent of the root without going through the root you know as close as you dare to the root tip and with some hypochlorite get some hypochlorite inside those canals and then when and only when you've done that and believe me this only takes 15 minutes right then if it's um, do it all under rubber dam of course then and only then do you dry it all out and uh, put a put a cotton wool uh, pledge in it with just one drop of uh, camphorated paramona chlorophenol or cresaphine uh, which you, you 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 wring out first don't put it in wet just put a drop on a cotton wool pledge and then squeeze it in a tissue hard so that it's only got the smell of it and then put that inside and then seal that up with cabot and then that gum boil will then go away okay if it doesn't then I'm <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to delete this video, but uh, it will do. It will do. And then, and the patient who's had two courses of antibiotics, been told that they need to have the tooth out because it's cracked, will then realise that the previous dentist um, really, really, sort of didn't have much of a clue about how to save a tooth in this sort of situation. And uh, I don't know what the motivation is for not saving this tooth. I honestly don't. I mean. It's tempting to say, well, you know, I mean, it was, I think he was an NHS dentist. So it's tempting, isn't it, to say, well, he gets paid the same for taking it out as he does for root treating it. Or, you know, he, he will want to, he, want, he probably wanted to root treat it, but it was a difficult root treatment, so he decided that he'd rather not, he just only does the easy ones. All these sort of things. But um, uh, my, judging from the technical work, the technical skill, because you're the second person there's nothing worse than being the second person inside a tooth, is there? If you're the first person inside a tooth, then you're, you're, um, you know, you, you get to see what, how God designed it. <laughs> it's that sort of, you get, you know where everything is because it's still where it, where God put it. <clears throat> but the second person inside a tooth, you could see anything. You know, you could see, uh, you can see um, false canals, perforations through the uh, bifurcation. Uh, ledges down the roots you've got all of that that's why we always if it's a re-root treatment we almost always charge it as a complex a complex job because you know, the, the previous dentist makes it complex when it could be easy it could have been done one and done but they make it complex so um, <clears throat> my my guess is that he or she whoever did it or I think it was a he was not um, too happy about doing just doing root treatments just didn't know how to do them make them easy you know I was, was not at all chuffed about having to root treat a lower left six which is silly because they are one of you know apart from the upper centrals or the lower centrals they are some of the easiest teeth to root treat uh, there's no real excuse for not being able to root treat a lower six so <clears throat> we do a lot of root treatments if you go on the website firstimpressions.dental you'll find that most of the um, x-ray pictures uh, of our, are of root treatments because that's what you know I mean they're the easiest ones to possibly use as illustrations but uh, we do a lot of them and I'm, I'm very happy we get very few I, I can't remember the last time we had to take a tooth out because we tried a root treatment on it and it failed um, they always just like Rod Bodger used to say you don't you don't have to um, necessarily root treat a tooth to the point where it's fill to the tip you have to root treat it to the point where you knock the germs back so hard that they know they can never recover you know they all die off and the thing doesn't get reinfected um, and yesterday I had a root treatment on a woman who <clears throat> and for some reason we had to move her appointment half an hour back we had an hour and a half and so it reduced the time that I had available to do it so I was well I was trying to work a bit faster than normal and um, we got to the point where we had opened this tooth up, cleaned it out, measured the roots but not filled them. So it was just a case of filling them to the measurements that we had. And um, with, with a molar, you know, we used the thermofill system and uh, put a... Uh, I managed to get a 20 
reamer up to the tip of the roots, but I couldn't get a 20 thermofill verifier up because it's more tapered, it's more cone shaped because it matches the points. And if you can't get the verifier up, then chances are you won't be able to get the point up to the tip either. But the point, the point was that I could get a 20 reamer up to the tip. So what we did was we loaded a 20 reamer up with um, root, root filling paste and uh, I got that up to the tip and then um, jammed the old uh, 20 thermofill GP in knowing that it wouldn't go to the tip. But the point was it forced all the paste up to the tip so that the whole route is filled anyway and on the route trim it looked pretty good so I'm not at all worried about that I mean and the main thing is that because we've got an apex locator we knew that the roots had been cleaned to the tip so it's not like you're worried about leaving anything at the tip um, we know that it is cleaned to the tip and so the paste really uh, the fact that the last sort of possibly even three or four millimeters of the filling were paste was not really um, an issue and uh, so don't really uh, you know get your knickers in a twist especially if you've got like a curved root or something on a molar and you can't get a point into the end as long as you can clean it to the end then you're generally okay but the, the guys on the course uh, the um, on the implant course I was talking to them the NHS guys about uh, root treatments asking them mainly how they do it because I honestly I don't understand how they do it for the nine quid or whatever they get paid on average per root treatment but um, they have a they have a mechanical they have all have mechanical systems now some bloke summed it up quite succinctly as one one ream of one point he said that's what it is that's the system one ream of one point one arm one leg one root treatment keep moving still I like I enjoyed the implant course I recommended it. I'd recommend it. Dental, D-E-N-T-A-L-E. They do like a one-week course, which culminates in you placing an implant, and then a ten, a, a ten-day or two-week course, which is about ten grand, but which is a bit more. where well, you get to place a lot more, but I'm only after placing simple ones. We'll just see how we go. I might not place any at all. You don't know, do you? I mean, I don't. I went on that Invisalign course, and never did an Invisalign. So who knows? All right. Nice to talk to you again. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.